Hello, my name is Steve OC and this is another Microtik tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to go over basic router security and hopefully try and help you to shield your router from any kind of nasty attacks coming from the internet. So we're going to dive straight in and we're going to go straight in for Winbox. So when you take a Microtik router out of the box and you log into it, the default login is admin and there is no password. So we can click connect and we can get straight in. It's great, it gives you access straight into your router, but it's really, really not secure. So the first thing we're going to do is go into system and then password, and we're going to put a password on our router. I'm going to use password as my password. So now the router is secure. We can't log in if we try and log in with no password. And if we put our password in, we can get straight in. Let's close that and put that there. So that's stage one. So your router is actually quite safe now. Um, the only issue you're going to have with that is it is still visible from the outside world. And also any local local IP range uh, can log into your router. So if you have guest networks, they still have access into your router. So what can we do about that? So what we can do about that is we can go into IP and services, and then you'll see all the services that your router offers. By highlighting these and then disabling them, we'll remove unwanted services and unwanted kinds of access into the router. This is quite good and I would consider it best practice to do this if you don't want anyone using a www, so the webfig, access onto your router, just disable it rather than just ignoring it and thinking your password is fine. So the next step what we can do is if you do have a, a private network and a guest network and I personally have a, a kids network as well, we can narrow it down so that only my stuff, only my kit will actually get to the router. So to do this we'll double click on the service and we'll just type in the subnet that we want to be able to access that. And I'm also going to copy that and I'm going to drop it in here. So that's great. So now we have a password on our router so only the admin can get into it and we've narrowed down the subnet range which can actually get into the router. At this point the router and its Winbox is still visible to the outside world though. So on our WAN interface, you can actually attempt to get in onto port 8291. It won't let you in, but the port will still be open. So for me, that's a bit of a security risk. Also having the SSH there, I don't want people really prodding and poking at those. So I'm going to go into IP, firewall, and then I'm going to add some drop rules. So my input, TCP, destination port 22. Now, in inf interface, it does need to be your WAN interface. On this particular router, my SFP is the interface which I'm connecting to it through. However, I am going to use VLAN 202 just as a placeholder, really, for the fact that that would be the WAN interface in your router. So we'll go to Action, Drop, and we'll just put a comment in here, Drop SSH. So we're now dropping SSH from the WAN interface and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put in 8291 and change the comment to drop Winbox. So now that's the router with its admin password. Only the what I would call my corporate LAN can get into that and also the port is not visible from the outside world. So anybody trying to log into the router is just gonna, is, isn't going to get anything um, rather than just getting a port open and not being able to get into it. So that's great and that's fine. Um, there is probably one further step you can go in ensuring that you have a, a very safe and secure router. Now there are schools of thought where they seem to imply that you need to go down the route of having port knocking available um, so you kind of trigger off some kind of weird chain of events of ports and pings and so on and so forth. I find it a little bit convoluted if I'm honest and 
there's no re and even then you know if someone were to find that they're still going to try and gain access to your router so there's nothing better really than a good quality username and a good strong password so to do this we're just going to go into system and users now in here you can see that your default admin user is still here now we're not going to touch that at this point we're just going to add a user and for this one i'm going to use steve oc group i'm going to want to be full i want full access to everything we can nail down the allowed address if we want to however i access my router from all over so i'm not going to do that but the password is going to be a decent password so we're just going to type that in twice and hit ok so now we have another admin user and you can see that because they've got a little red bell next to them so i'm going to start a new winbox and i'm now going to go in on my newly created user with my newly created password and i'm in new winbox session so what i'm now going to do rather than completely deleting the default user we know that it's got a decent password and we're just going to change it to read only now you can completely remove this user however i don't really see the point in it and if you do ever need to look at something on the router and for whatever reason the default user has lesser restrictions on it you could use that um, the reality of it is is you're probably not going to so you probably could delete it and not have any issues and that's it once you've carried out these the, the, those steps you will find that your router is less accessible from pretty much every corner of a network and you can be quite safe and quite knowledgeable that your router is not going to be compromised or anybody else is going to get into it. Now there are a few caveats I will just put onto that and that's that you do have the option to change your port numbers for things like Winbox and SSH. Some people do like to do that, some people don't. Personally I don't, I'd rather leave a port number as it is and just use it. And if you are trying to secure a router which has previously been compromised, this can be a bit of a tricky thing to do. And I would always recommend going into system and just checking your scripts and making sure that there's nothing in there. Likewise, have a look at scheduler, which is, I believe, under system. And it's there, scheduler. And make sure that there isn't anything set to run on there as well. Sometimes if you're re-securing a router, and there is something in there it will auto run itself when you reboot or after x amount of hours from a change on the router and if you haven't gone through those quick things just to make sure there's nothing there then they could rerun themselves and they could put you in another mess likewise you can click on files and just make sure that there aren't any any scripts just sitting in there waiting to be run so that's it if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and I certainly do encourage you to leave comments, feedback on the videos, how you found them, if it was helpful. And if you'd like to see anything else, please feel free to leave that in there also. I do have a small variety of both written and video tutorials available from my website, steveoc.co.uk. And also there are a few videos if you head over to my channel. I do have a playlist on there from Microtik and its playlist and its tutorial videos, which I am slowly starting to grow. Thank you very much.